Homemade biscuits and gravy. You had me at hoe. Today on Portraits, we are making biscuits and gravy. It's something classic and perfect for brunches. We're making our biscuits from scratch. We're making our gravy from scratch. We're gonna put it together and then we're going right to sleep. Starting out, I've got 15 ounces of all-purpose flour into a mixing bowl. Again, another reason to own a food scale. They're great for precision cooking and not expensive at all. To this, we'll add two tablespoons of white sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, mix all of that up, and then we need two sticks of unsalted butter, or you could be fancy like me and use European butter, which has more fat in it. What's really important here, more than the type of butter, is making sure our butter is ice cold because we're going to grate it into our flour mixture and we're going to have to move fast here because the heat from our hands will cause the butter to start warming up and we don't want that so i put my butter in the freezer for about 40 minutes and then as soon as i took it out it went straight to the grater grating allows for us to evenly distribute it amongst our dry ingredients which is why we do it you could cut it up into squares and put it in your mixture and then use a pastry cutter and do all that stuff or you could even put it in a food processor with the grater attachment Either way, just make sure it's evenly distributed, it's ice cold, because grated butter will also help us get a flakier biscuit. Once I shredded it all, I popped the butter back into the freezer for a good 15 minutes just to firm it back up, and then into our flour mixture it goes. I folded it with a silicone spatula because again, I don't want the heat from my hands melting any of this butter. Once incorporated evenly, I'll add in one and one fourth cups of cold butter milk, and I'll give that a good mixing as well. It should form a very loose dough, and then it's time to make a fun little mess. Here comes the importance of clean kitchen surfaces because we're going to need one for this part. I've dusted my counter with flour and I pulled the dough out onto it. People make biscuits in small kitchens all the time, so don't fret if you don't have this type of counter space. Just ask your granny how she did it. Now, I've dusted my rolling pin with flour, and this is the part where if you've never made biscuits before, you might get discouraged. So allow me to elaborate and give reassurance. So I rolled my dough out here into the rough shape of a rectangle. It's gonna look hella crumbly and dry, and you're probably gonna think this dough needs way more liquid, but don't worry. This is part of the process of making our flaky layers. So I'll roll it out, and then I'll use my bench scraper to bring in one end and then fold the other end as well, kind of like a letter. Then I'll turn the dough 90 degrees and roll it out. And that is one pass. And we want to do this a total of five times. And you'll notice each time that you fold it in both ends, turned it and rolled it out, that the dough magically starts to look more together and moist. Trust me, I was freaking out a bit those first two passes, but by number five, it was good. Also, in between rolls, make sure you're dusting with flour so nothing sticks. Same for the rolling pin, keep that thing floured. I might have actually done six passes, but that's fine. Get your dough wrapped tightly in some plastic wrap and let it rest in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, but you can also go overnight. That way you've knocked out all the dirty work the night before and the next morning all you have to do is just make your biscuits and you're good to go. For me, it's been about two hours because I lost track of time because I was enjoying some Prosecco and orange juice. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees because now it's time to form our biscuits. I have dusted my countertop again after cleaning it up from earlier. I also dusted the dough and my rolling pin and what we want to do is roll out this into a rectangle that's roughly 10 inches by six inches and about a half inch thick. You don't have to be exact here, but every recipe I looked up called for about the same measurement, so I'm going with that. Once I've got the size, I took my biggest and sharpest knife and straightened off the edges. It's important to use a big and sharp knife here because it could pinch the dough and cause for uneven rising while baking if you were to use something dull or having to make multiple cuts. I eyeballed my dough into six pieces. I'm going with squares here because as some have pointed out, when you go with circles, you have so much leftover dough that while you can re-roll it and cut more out of it, it just adds more work. And let's minimize the scraps and just do squares. Once my squares were cut, I got a baking sheet with some parchment paper on it and I used a spatula to move my pieces on. Again, as to not pinch or destroy any of the sides. I also made sure I spaced them out. I then melted about two tablespoons of butter and brushed it on top along with some sprinkles of finishing salt on each piece. I baked mine for 25 minutes. I was actually hoping for a more golden brown color like you see uh, at your local Carl's Jr. or whatever it is, but at the 25 minute mark, it had doubled in size, so I knew it was good, and I didn't want to risk over baking it. I don't think over baking is a real word, but that's what I'm using. So I took them out, and I'm glad I did because it was perfect. Let them cool while we get started on our sausage gravy. Now, let me address the elephant in the room, which is biscuits and gravy are not the same everywhere. I'm sure some folks across the pond are thinking, what the fuck is this American bullshit? And you're right, it is, but it's delicious. And I grew up in the South, and this is what we call biscuits and gravy. The gravy part being extra delicious and easy to put together, so let's do it. I've got a pack of Jimmy Dean sage sausage here. You can use any type of breakfast sausage. Get that into a skillet over high heat and cook until browned. Oh look, more Prosecco. 
Now there is already a lot of flavor in the sauces, so I didn't feel the need to add more seasoning like salt and pepper or onion and garlic powder, but if that's your jam, go for it. Just know it's already in the sausage, which is what gives it that breakfast flavor. Trying to cut down on the sodium here, folks. Lower your heat to medium once the sausage is brown, and to that brown sausage, I'm adding two tablespoons of all-purpose flour to help thickening our gravy later on, as well as a sprig of rosemary just because I had it and didn't want to waste it. Totally optional, but it added great flavor. Cook off that raw flour smell and then add in one cup of whole milk. I added in a little at a time and also keep more on hand because everyone likes to gravy a little bit differently some like it runny i like mine on the thicker side so you may need to play around with more milk or less milk and as you add it you'll notice the gravy forming and starting to thicken and keep on stirring and here's where you can taste for salt i gave a little sprinkling because again i'm trying to watch my salt intake also i gave a very very light dusting of fresh nutmeg it just plays so well with this dish and while you may not have seen your granny or auntie adding this back in the day it will definitely help yours stand out the nutmeg isn't there to overpower it it's just to enhance all the other flavors taste and see if it needs anything else and then we plate split your biscuit in half if you like or don't pile your gravy on top and then you could turn this into like a little sandwich if you want to or just make it an absolute mess it doesn't matter it's going in your mouth and there you have it another addition to your brunch repertoire hey everyone this is poor choices kitchen we have a patreon it is linked down in the descriptions one dollar a month is all we ask for to help pay for recipes in these here inflated times and it goes a long way to really help the channel and as i mentioned earlier i was drinking prosecco and orange juice the classic mimosa it just goes so well with all these brunch recipes and i hope you enjoyed let me know what things you do to your biscuits and gravy or have you even heard of this before? I'd love to give this a try again with a few different additions, like maybe some cheddar cheese or some chives or something like that. You know, make it a little bit fancy. Anyways, you all enjoy and I will see you soon.